Welcome back to Fast Market. I'm Alex Coffey. Earnings season is here, and it's not just the banks. We got Pepsi to talk about. It's time for our cash tag segment. Joining me here in studio is TD Ameritrade Network contributor Jenny Horn. Tom White still with me, filling in for the regular co-host Tom White or Kevin Hanks rather. <laughs> and uh, we got the co-founder of LikeFolio.com, Andy Swan, joining us as well. Uh, Jenny, as I said, talking some PepsiCo. Uh, I'll, I'll make the, the the comment Kevin would make. Any, <laughs> anything Fritos, Edos? Yes, the, that's Pepsi. Large brand or a portfolio of chips it has, which I know Kevin <laughs> Hanks will channel him today. But you all just talked banks, and I think that's sort of stealing the spotlight. But PepsiCo does report second quarter earnings tomorrow. They're up about 13% in the last year, so they have. So they're trading now above their COVID levels, I mean, right below their all-time high, but still underperforming the S&P 500, which I think sets them up in a very interesting position ahead of this report. Now, their Frito-Lay North American division has unsurprisingly held up very well during the pandemic, as they're going to be facing very difficult now year-over-year -year comps with so many consumers at home last year just snacking more. And I think it's actually important to keep in mind, outside of, you know, Doritos, Cheetos, Fritos, it's actually expanded its prepared food brands with names like Rice Roni and mm. Quaker Foods, which have seen a lot of strength in the last year with so many people now eating breakfast at home and also just preparing more meals at home. Now, their North American beverage segment, which is, of course, the namesake Pepsi, is facing much easier comps relatively. And really, what's interesting about Pepsi is it had such a, a huge exposure to food service. So think concerts, ball games. Con Tom White and I were actually at a concert this weekend, not together, just the same concert. And, <laughs> and it, it's funny because we both felt like, you know, what pandemic? It was absolutely packed. It was impossible to get food and drink. And Pepsi is a company that stands to capitalize on really just the fact that so many of these large venues are coming back. Now, what Kevin would also always say to channel him again is no one ever ordered a rum and Pepsi, Craig, or instead of rum and Coke, I believe. So what is interesting is actually it appears like data is actually showing that right now Pepsi, namesake Pepsi, not even just Pepsi Frito-Lay, is pulling ahead in terms of sales growth with its competitor Coke. So that brings me to our first tweet of the day, which actually shocked me because there was a ton of positive noise on Pepsi versus Coke, which says Coca-Cola is a constant underperformer when compared to PepsiCo. Has been for many years. Recently, Pepsi has taken the lead on year-to-date 2021. Commercial side of Coca-Cola is a low-margin business. Reopen is b benefit to any company. It is not what drives out performance. So I actually thought this was very interesting because typically I feel like the noise on social media is super biased to favor a Coke versus a Pepsi. This was obviously not the case with this tweet. And the next tweet actually says the exact same thing, more you know, favoring a Pepsi over Coke, which says... PepsiCo has transformed itself from a pure soda company to an incredibly well-diversified food and beverage company. 120 years of a successful diversification story. So I actually thought this was really interesting because, you know, typically you just don't hear that noise and reflected on social media. Andy, I don't know if you're seeing the same thing with your data because I always felt like Coke was sort of the outperformer relative to Pepsi. Today I saw sort of a different light. Yeah, no, it has, it has switched a little bit. Um, you know, like Folio has, you know, we track consumer happiness mentions for both of these companies across all of their brands. Uh, Pepsi's happiness actually now uh, five points higher uh, versus Coca-Cola. Um, some of that is political in nature. Uh, Coca-Cola's run into a little bit of controversy, but also some of it is just quality of products. And, um, you know, when we look at this report coming up, Jenny, I think you hit the nail on the head with this is a tough comps uh, cycle for Pepsi with all of their snacking because we just see overall snacking mentions. So just people talking about having a snack down 29% year over year. Cause I think last year, a lot of us got uh, really ahead of ourselves. And then on the other side of the coin, um, you know, we're seeing people really focused on improving energy, caffeinated beverages really taking off. And you can see it here on this scatter plot of uh, Pepsi brands. Uh, further to the left means uh, less growth or negative growth. Further to the right, uh, more growth. And then uh, the, the vertical axis measures consumer happiness. And you can see that really what Pepsi has going for it that's going well is Rockstar uh, and its bubbly brand, where all of the snacking brands are falling below uh, that dotted line and seeing uh, negative growth year over year. Because, again, it's just such a, uh, a, a tough comp year. For Pepsi, so I think they're going to have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uphill uh, to climb here, uh, because you know what we were doing a year ago, 
at least for most of us, is quite a bit different than what we're doing today, especially um, in terms of activity level and, uh, and what we're eating. Yeah, and Andy, if you take a look at that uh, dot plot there, and you know, for over 40% of the revenue is now driven from Frito Lay. Is this also setting you up, or uh, you know, like Folio's preference for this company that it's probably going to underperform in earnings just due to the fact that two of their smaller segments are the ones that are really outperforming at this point? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, there's definitely not a red flag type of situation. It's just. You know they have tough comps. If we had to bet, um, we would we would be slightly bearish going into this earnings report. It's just a tough uh, hill to climb given where the stock is and what was going on last year. Uh, really tough comparison. But you know one of the great things about a company like uh, Pepsi is that it does have you know a huge portion of the grocery store that it owns, and that diversification pays off. Uh, even in times like this, now they have a couple fairly new brands to the company uh, outperforming and doing well. So it's a nice uh, company to be look, looking at uh, when you want that kind of uh, all across the board grocery store exposure. Andy, when you're looking at this, of course, we're looking at kind of con consumer mentions that are consumer facing purchases. So this is going to more than likely be someone talking about going to the convenience store, talking about going to uh, Target or Walmart. This is the stuff that they would actually buy when they go grocery so shopping. And so as things reopen, you know, we're, we're seeing maybe a little bit less of that, more normalized uh, kind of numbers for that, but more uh, attending concerts, more attending bars, restaurants. And at that kind of a situation, it's far more the relationship the company has with the restaurants and these different venues. And so as we look uh, towards, I was watching uh, the Euro, uh, you know, soccer championship. That stadium looked packed, okay? Whichever one of these companies had that relationship probably sold a lot of beverages. And so you look at those kind of trends working towards a reopened world, reopened uh, economy. Is that kind of a rising tide lifts both these ships? Yeah, I think so. And then, you know, in addition to that, I think there is a little bit of, of a sea change going on. It used to be, you know, utter disappointment when the when the server told you we don't have coke is diet pepsi okay or is pepsi okay that was like the big joke mm -hmm. was how disappointing that was but now we've seen a shift and we see uh, consumer happiness for pepsi uh, five points higher than for coke so what that does you know it takes a long time for that to 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 uh, find its way into those vendor type of relationships but it does have an impact and it does mean that these places like event centers, like restaurants, can go to the table and negotiate with Coke or with Pepsi without that kind of stigma of Pepsi being second best or Pepsi being the choice of, of cheap restaurants. I think that's that's um, starting to go away at least a little bit. So it'd be interesting to see uh, you know, how these restaurants, when they reopen, uh, they'll be very cost conscious and it'll be interesting to see how aggressive Pepsi can get in winning uh, some of those formerly lost relationships. So Andy, is it ever difficult to compare Coke and Pepsi because Pepsi now operates like Tom mentioned, I think 40% of its revenue from Frito-Lay. So is it difficult to make those comparisons because I have to say Coke I typically think of now being a pure beverage play but Pepsi is no longer that and really hasn't been now for a few years. Yeah it's difficult but we you know just like you saw on the scatter plot we can break it down by brand. Uh, and we can take a look at, you know, at, a, at an apples to apples comparison, just the drink uh, versus the rest. But I do think it is an advantage of Pepsi, um, the way that they have uh, diversified uh, all of their offerings. So, um, yeah, it's difficult, but, you know, like Folio can do it. <laughs> yeah, Andy, uh, great point. And it's also important as we look at this scatter plot. One, I'm just surprised at how many brands really are underneath this umbrella. And this is in many ways probably just kind of scratching the surface as you could think about all the different kinds of Doritos, all the different kinds of Cheetos and all of that. But when we look at these particular brands and we start considering, uh, you know, what this means, it's important to notice the scale. So it's a 90 day moving average, but it's a year over year comparison. And as you pointed out, these are tough comparables for what people were talking about doing a year ago. That was kind of, you know, the heart of the pandemic. We were really settling in. We were finally realizing that, you know, this, this working from home, this, you know, social distancing, uh, these bar closures and all of the natures of that, this is longer than we thought. This is going to be here for a little bit. And maybe we need to make some different changes in our habits. The question now is how much of this stuff stuck? 
And looking at this, and I think this is probably the reason you're slightly concerned about this report is it doesn't look like a, a, a lot of it really has. Yeah, I think I think that's right. In fact, I think there's a little bit, you know, in just uh, the qualitative research that we do, we do see just a little bit of a backlash against uh, what 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 we were doing personally last summer. It was like, well, we can't do anything, so let's snack and let's drink and let's, you know, stay home. And so I think that there is a, uh, you know, there's a there's a shift in consumer behavior. There's a mindfulness about uh, what people are doing and putting into their bodies a little bit more than there was last year. So the pendulum starting or has swung the other way. And now it'll actually be more interesting as we get into back to school and, and all that stuff how well this sticks. I think everything mm -hmm. probably ends up normalizing back to where it was uh, in 2019, but for Pepsi and for this earnings report and probably the next earnings report, it's just a really tough comparison to look back against uh, 2020. So uh, overall, I don't, I don't see anything really crazy other than just sort of that backlash uh, and we'll probably end up returning to, to normal fairly soon uh, on this stuff, at least, um, you know, I hope so and I'm sure Pepsi hopes so too. Absolutely. And uh, Andy, I love that point. Strong one. We'll leave it there. The co-founder of likefolio.com, Andy Swan. Uh, thanks for joining us here on this Monday. Guys, I actually I love that because I described the last year or the time that we we're at home as kind of pushing the pause button. You know, maybe you, you didn't work out as much. I know a lot of people got Pelotons and and we're doing the, we're doing the diets. But for at least for me, it was I'm pushing the pause button. As Andy said, maybe I'm going to snack a little bit more. 